Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are on episode number 44. Today's topic is adas, which is Farsi for lentils. Lentils are a very common ingredient in many Persian recipes. They are a nutritious superfood, and I'm so happy to be doing a deep dive today with Bita June. Hi, Bita. How are you today? I'm great. Hi, Bita June. How are you? I'm doing well. And again, I'm happy to be talking about lentils. They're delicious, nutty, earthy, nutritious, little round flat discs. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about lentils. We've actually have wanted to talk about lentils, but we've had other topics that we picked up first. So I'm glad to be talking about this great ingredient. And I think when I think about lentils, there's kind of like two executions really kind of stand out the most to me, like lentil soup, and then also like more in a rice form. Yeah. So just in case there's anybody out there who who hasn't had lentils, I don't know, maybe there are. Let's just first say, what are they? They are in the bean or legume category. And beans and legumes are a big part of Persian cuisine. As you said, the lentil soup and the layered lentil rice at Espolo are probably the most commonly seen recipes in Persian cuisine. There are others, right? We do have lentils and other beans as part of ashrashte. Mm -hmm. We also use lentils sometimes in the spring to sprout and have on our sofre for half seen, the Persian New Year. So that's right. You see them kind of all throughout highly nutritious. They have an earthy, savory flavor. Mm -hmm. I personally love the flavor. Mm -hmm. I can eat them plain. And I think that's even a version just to cook them plain in our cuisine and have them like a chorak or a snack yeah, or a little side. Mm -hmm. Or like add them to a salad or kind of mix them with like a little vinaigrette, like as like a side or salad. Yeah. So to put my nutritionist hat on and delve into how nutritious they are, I can't not talk about how they are a superfood. They're an excellent source of plant-based protein. They have really good dietary fiber, folic acid or folate, which is good for developing brains, pregnant moms, breastfeeding moms. I know I ate them a bunch in my pregnancies. I joke that it makes smart babies. And if you are iron deficient, which I sometimes tend to be, a little bit anemic because I don't eat a ton of red meat. Lentils do have iron and they're just so nutritious. They have vitamins and minerals. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so soup and layered rice. So the soup in Farsi, the lentil soup has a name. It's called adasi. Yeah, so we actually grew up calling it Asha Adas. So I'm not sure if that was just like our family thing or a regional thing. But yeah, adasi, I think is kind of the more common term to refer to the lentil soup. And I think there's definitely regional variations to it. But it's a really simple, rustic soup. Growing up, the way that we would have it is just really lentils cooked with like onions. And you could have it as basic as just like the lentils and the onions, basically. But my mom would sneak in like pureed pumpkin or squash in there too. And it just gives it a little bit more hardiness and silkiness to the lentil soup. And I have actually really fond memories of like having that soup with my dad. And he would garnish his up with like raw chopped onions on top and would always have it with some toasted bread or croutons on the side. And personally, I love it with a big dollop of yogurt as well. In Isfahan, they have that for breakfast with halim. They pair it with the halim. So that was interesting. I was at a brunch party one time and they were serving that. And I was like, oh, how interesting that they have that. And I think it's not just Isfahan, but I think other regions of Iran actually serve it like that too. Maybe that's why I sometimes have it with my breakfast. Maybe it's my northern Iran roots. And my dad is from northern Iran. And I actually will sometimes have it alongside eggs and tomatoes and 
because it's so nutritious and I want even more protein, I'll sometimes have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's delicious. It really is. I love it. My version of lentil soup kind of has evolved a little bit from that pretty simple version. I'll sometimes make it with broth. I think the traditional way is you actually just cook it with water, but I'll like to do it with broth. I like to add additional vegetables to it. I'm actually working on a recipe for like a vegan lentil soup. So it can be completely vegan. You can add broth to it if you want to. Kind of more modern version is actually incorporating more vegetables into it as well. Do you put any spices in your more modern version of lentil soup? Well, I definitely put turmeric in it. I have cumin in there as well. And then just kind of salt and pepper, you know, some aromatics like celery and onion to just add more flavor. Mm, It sounds delicious. Yeah, thank you. And then, you know, you referenced Ashadishte too, which is one of my favorites, which is a hearty noodle and bean and herb soup. And lentils are included in that as one of the beans that are in there. Yeah, I think worth noting is that they're just so flavorful and robust without much to it. Ashereshte mm-hmm. that you mentioned, the Persian noodle soup, does not require much in terms of spices, in my opinion. I think that the fresh herbs and the flavor of the lentils and beans is enough. For myself personally, I think it's so flavorful and delicious. Yeah, the fried onions that are in there. I always buy the little green lentils. I get them from Trader Joe's. They hold their shape well. They work really well in Persian recipes and soups that I make. And they're almost like the petite green French lentils. That's what I prefer. I know brown lentils are really easy to interchange with the green lentils and they work well. Their flavor profiles are very similar. But both brown and green lentils tend to hold their shape well, which is important when you're making Persian soups and rices. So I know that other recipes sometimes that use lentils, you might even use like an immersion blender and mix it all together. But I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Persian soups keep the lentils intact. Yeah. I mean, if you overcook it also, you kind of get the mushier consistency to it. But yeah, especially like in the rices and stuff like that, it's showing each of the individual lentils looks really beautiful. Yeah, it has a little more texture. Mm -hmm. There are such thing as red and yellow lentils. They tend to be milder, sweeter, they cook up faster, they get mushy faster. And also worth noting is that we have a dish, Choresh Qaymeh. It looks like yellow lentils, but it is in fact not yellow lentils. Choresh Qaymeh is made with yellow split peas. Mm, mm -hmm. But let's circle back and talk about one of my favorite and first things I ever cooked, which is aras polo, Mm -hmm. layered lentil rice. I make it with dates and raisins. I use all my favorite type of cozy Persian spices. I love to make it in the fall and the winter, but anytime is delicious. Mm -hmm. And I do use sauteed onions, cinnamon, saffron, turmeric, glazed raisins and dates, and I sprinkle in some pistachios or almonds and oof, makes me want to have some right now. How do you make adas polo, Bita June? Yeah, I love adas polo too. It's again, another like rustic, homey dish. And you know, I love adas polo, but I especially love adas polo with this beautiful caramelized topping or garnish with it. The way that I cook it is I actually cook the lentils with the rice and steam it. And one thing to note that if you're making adas polo and you're going to put a tadik, you shouldn't necessarily use the adas in the tadik part of it because actually the adas can kind of burn and get a little bit hard. So if you're going to do that, I would actually reserve a little bit of just white rice for your tadik or use potatoes or bread or something besides the lentil rice for the crust, just as a side note. I usually make my rice kate, which means that I don't like parboil it and strain it. I just kind of cook it all together. And I cook that. And then separately, I have caramelized onions with plump, beautiful raisins and dates and walnuts with a little bit of cinnamon and turmeric in there as well. And when I'm presenting the dish, the rice dish, is when we'll actually pour that mixture on top of it. So it really adds a delicious sweetness to the lentils itself. And, you know, it adds a whole bunch of other nutrients to it. So like, if you don't want to have meat, you don't have to have meat in this dish at all. Sometimes I will add meat. I'll put like chicken or 
beef with the lentils. I'll cook those and then I'll add it with the raisins and dates and things and have that as part of the mixture. But the way that I make it, it's two separate components that are brought together when serving. And it's really beautiful and it actually holds really well. I actually love making that for like with, you know, someone got it like a new place or, you're, you know, you're, you has a baby or something like that. It's like a nice dish to kind of share with other people. But I think you make yours a little bit different than that. You don't do it as two separate and combine it, do you? I do serve it as more of a mixed rice dish in my recipe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that because I remember you had mentioned that before too, that you let it steam together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try that next time. I can see that. Then you get all those flavors. Do you feel like it makes your rice mushy at all? Uh, No, no, no. I think between making steam holes and using the cloth or damkoni over the top, you know, it absorbs the steam and Mm -hmm. it keeps the rice separate, intact and delicious. So yeah, it's such a good dish. It's so delicious and comforting. Yeah, it's so good. I really like to have it with fresh herbs on the side too. Yeah, I keep mine vegetarian. I just find that the it doesn't really need anything at all with the lentils mm-hmm. being as nutritious as they are. I rarely cook a meat with it. I just keep it as a complete balanced meal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm just cooking plain lentils, I like to actually serve it with salmon too. Mm. I think they pair well together. Interesting. I wouldn't think of it, but that sounds good. Mm -hmm. This has been really nice to deep dive and go back to our longer episode length. Yeah, we, for over the summer, we did a series of micro episodes. So if you haven't had a chance to check those out, definitely you can find them on all the podcast downloading apps and sites and also on our website, modernpersianfood.com with links back to all of our episodes. And one thing that we've missed is the Ask the Beats. We skipped those for these micro episodes and I'm excited to get talking about an Ask the Beats. And so we have one today from Mahyar from Canada. And he asks about cinnamon in savory foods. So I think that's a really great question because I think a lot of time people think cinnamon is for like sweets, but you mentioned for like the adas polo, we like to incorporate like a little bit of cinnamon with the caramelized dates and onions and raisins and adding a little bit of cinnamon. But what are some other foods that you like to use cinnamon and savory foods that you like to use cinnamon in Bita June? As mentioned, definitely in my adas polo. The other one is in my lubia polo, which is really my mom's lubia polo, Mm -hmm. definitely has cinnamon. Those are my main two Persian dishes I use cinnamon in, lubia polo and adas polo. How about you? Yeah, I love it with lubia polo too. It just adds such a nice little warmth to it. Actually, I think cinnamon... Cinnamon is kind of like my secret ingredient. Like sometimes if I make ashirishte, I'll put a little bit of cinnamon in, in, in there. And I think it really, you don't know what it is, but it just adds like the je ne sais quoi of something delicious in there. So I like to kind of sneak it in when I'm cooking. Also, if I'm kind of just like dry rubbing some like chicken and just going to saute some chicken, you know, kebabi like on the pan type of thing, I'll sometimes put like a little dry rub on it and I'll just put like some turmeric and cumin and a little bit of cinnamon and then just kind of grill that up. And that's a fun way to use cinnamon in there. Also, it's kind of sweet and savory is halim. Halim is like this porridge made typically with like turkey or poultry and barley. I sometimes make it with like oats and it's like a porridge essentially served typically for breakfast. And that's garnished with cinnamon and melted butter and sugar. So it kind of has like a little sweet and savory notes to it. But yeah, definitely cinnamon is in savory foods in Persian cooking. Yeah, I put it in soups. I just, as you were talking about Halim, I remembered, I also sneak it into soups. I have a Moroccan instant pot soup recipe that's delicious. It has a dash in there. And I have a lentil soup that's not the Persian lentil soup. It has like carrots and squash. And there's some cinnamon in there. I think it just definitely does. It adds a cinnamon cozy touch. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bita June. It's been a pleasure talking about one of my favorite staples ingredients in Persian cuisine, lentils, adas. Until next time. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.